Hello everyone. Welcome back to Isolation Libations. This is episode 22. It's Tuesday night and I am your outdoor bartender, Joey Joyce. So we're making cocktails to pair along with the musical stylings of one Mr. Brian Chartrand. You can catch his happy half hour live at five o'clock every weeknight uh, Pacific time on facebook.com backslash Brian Chartrand Music. So if you don't happen to catch it live, you can always go back to his Facebook page and watch it on demand. And same thing goes for these cocktails, right? Hey, I'm not even live, so they're available anytime on my Instagram page. And actually my YouTube page is going to be coming up pretty soon too, so you can check them out there. Um, you know, what else are we gonna do right now? Let's have some fun with some drinks and some music. It's a good thing. All right, if you watched yesterday, um, we did a pretty complicated one. There were a lot of steps involved. Had the torch, um, that was the 100,000 pesos, numero tres cocktail. Uh, basically just a complicated margarita. But that had a lot of steps. And so today, we're going back to a simple classic. And we are going to make the Sazerac. Now, if you couldn't tell from the music, uh, the Sazerac comes from New Orleans. Um, quick shout out to this band, Tuba Skinny. They're really cool too. Awesome band, check them out. Um, yeah, so this cocktail again comes from New Orleans. Now, like all seemingly classic cocktails, they all have this jumbled origin history. There are different uh, versions, different takes on the story where it came from. There are some who say it came from around the 1830s and that originally it was made with cognac, uh, a cognac that went by the name, the brand name Sazerac. Now, if you've ever heard of Dave Wondrich, he is a famous, well-respected cocktail historian. He says that that's all kind of malarkey and that the Sazerac as we know it really appeared in 1890s and was always in fact made with rye. So I don't know, I wasn't there, I'm not that old, uh, but I do tend to trust Dave Wondrich. So for our classic straight ahead, simple New Orleans Sazerac, we're gonna be making it with rye. You can try it with cognac, I've done that. It tastes really good too. Um, a half-half blend, some people do that as well. So like half rye whiskey, half cognac, those go together real well. Um, it's a nice balance. But personally, for myself, my favorite is still just a straight ahead rye whiskey style. But uh, I like rye whiskey anyway, so it's no wonder I like it with a little bit of touch of absinthe, some lemon oil, and some peychaud bitters. So speaking of that, let's talk about our ingredients. Um, we can go ahead and actually start building this whole cocktail. So we're gonna start classic New Orleans bitters, Peychaud's bitters, except no substitutes. Now again, I keep saying if it's a new bottle like this, the dashes are gonna be smaller. If it's an older bottle with less in it, the dashes are gonna be bigger. I'm saying about seven dashes should work at this level. That was seven, we'll see. Seems about right. Now, uh, there's a little bit of sugar in this cocktail. It's really like a New Orleans old fashioned if you think about it. Just a little bit of a New Orleans flair. So this is our, <laughs> my, our, mine. Um, I'll share it, it's ours. Demerara simple syrup. So you see the dark color, um, it's a less refined sugar. Gives a little bit more flavor. You could use regular simple syrup too. You could drop a sugar cube in there and muddle it with a little splash of water and the bitters, that would work as well. Um, I like the simple syrup, the Demerara. So about a bar spoon, and as I said before, bar spoon is relative, depends on how big your bar spoon is. Maybe a third of a teaspoon. You don't want it being too sweet. So if anything, I'm almost going like half of this bar spoon. Again, you can always increase the sweetness. You can't really take it out. So proceed with caution. Next up, our old Overholt Bottled and Bond 100 proof rye. This should go quite nicely, I believe. So two ounces. I love this music, it makes me happy. All right, now, um, it's cold out, so I have ice in this glass that we're gonna be using to put the cocktail in. Normally you would wanna have just a glass like right out of the freezer 
or you can add ice cubes to kind of chill the glass, but you do want a chilled glass for this because you are going to serve it up and it is typically in a rocks glass as well. Since it's cold and this hasn't melted at all, I'm going to use this ice to stir as well. And again, so this is going to be served up without any further ice. You do want to give it a good stir to make sure it's diluted enough because again, that's as diluted as, as it's going to be. It won't melt anymore. It's just going to get warmer. And I'm stirring a little, a little longer because again, it's cold outside. That feels right to me. Now, oh, almost missed a very important step. Absinthe. So this is from uh, Oregon Spirit Absinthe. So a local absinthe from Ben. This is the first time I've had it or got to play with it. So far, so good. I like it. I look forward to using it in a larger amount. So for the Sazerac, you're just rinsing the glass with absinthe. So you can do it a couple ways. You can pour a little bit in, kind of roll it around and toss the excess. I hate tossing excess absinthe, it, it hurts. So you can put it in a little atomizer like this and then you can just spray it in. That way you really coat the glass because you're just kind of getting the aromatics of that kind of black li licorice notes. So yeah, you're spraying it and then you don't really have a couple drops, but you don't have waste because you don't want to waste it lovely absinthe. Now, ah, so, strain your Sazerac right in there. So the color you're looking for, you don't want it like as red as a bottle of Peixo bitters, but you do want it not just to be brown like, like whiskey. You want a little bit of that nice red or, or pink notes to it. Now for the garnish, gotta have lemon peel. There is couple schools of thought on do you express the oil over the top and chuck the lemon peel or do you put it in? I've always put it in. Some people say it looks messy or doesn't need to be in there. I like it in there. Adds a little splash of yellow color. So again, skin side out, squeeze it. Ooh, that one seemed very dud-like. So I'll probably do another one. Because that lemon oil is an important part of the drink. You don't want to overdo it either. So find your balance. Find your balance like you're sitting on a railing. There you go. That's more like it. So again, kind of wipe the rim so the oils kind of get on you. But again, careful not to do it. So leave it out, put it in. I'm putting it in because it's my drink and I like it in there. So cheers everyone. Happy Tuesday. Enjoy Brian's music. And I will see you Wednesday for the midweek mocktail. We'll do something non-alcoholic. Give a little rest. But for now, sticking with the booze. Ciao.